Welcome to this video presentation of the catch demonstration held at TNO in Reiswijk. During the demonstration, an exercise was held in which a CBRN team from the Ministry of Defense participated. The exercise was made possible by the CBRN response simulator developed by Prometech within the catch project. During this video, you will get a short impression of the exercise and how the simulator was used to recreate a large-scale CBRN incident in the town of Reiswijk. It all started by the creation of a scenario. Using the simulator, this can be done from behind a computer by simply browsing to the appropriate website. We will now show you how this was done. After logging in, the user will be redirected to the Scenario screen, where all available scenarios are listed. It is also possible to create a new scenario by pressing the appropriate button. The instructor will then be asked to enter some details about the scenario, such as a short name and description. More importantly, however, will be to enter information about the weather conditions, which will be used by the gas dispersion model to determine how the plume will be dispersed over the incident area. Parameters that affect the dispersion are, of course, wind speed and direction, but also the wind stability, temperature, and overall roughness of the terrain. For this exercise, the wind speed has been set at 4 meters per second and blowing in a mostly northern direction. After creating the scenario, the instructor is then redirected to a map of the Netherlands. The virtual incident takes place at a major chemical facility in the vicinity of TNO at Reiswijk. It simulates the dispersion of a potentially deadly substance over a considerable area. In this scenario, we assume one of the facility's storage tanks will be leaking for a good 20 minutes. Here we can see the instructor adding the substance release event by simply right-clicking the map. He provides some further details, such as type of substance leaking, in this case hydrogen sulfide, as well as the release size of the leakage and the rate of release. As you can see, the release rate and size are both set to zero after 20 minutes. After adding the event, the backend dispersion model starts calculating how the substance will spread under the conditions that were previously defined. An outline of the plume will be plotted, whereby the instructor can see its size and shape at any time during the exercise. In this case, we can see how the plume initially drifts over the TNO facilities, and then, after the leakage is stopped, drifts further in the direction of Reiswijk and The Hague. The instructor can add further events to the scenario, such as incoming emergency calls, changes in weather, or other events that may help structure the exercise. Now we're ready to run the exercise itself. The trainees prepare for the exercise by donning their protective equipment, while a command center is set up to coordinate the virtual emergency response operation. Using the same interface as before, the instructor simply creates a training session and starts playing the scenario. The virtual plume will now start spreading over the incident area, which includes the TNO facilities where the field unit trainees are operating their virtual sensors. The virtual sensor is modeled on this consumer off-the-shelf tablet. It can be used by trainees in the field to detect the virtual cloud. Different sensors can be modeled on the tablet. During the project, two sensor models were implemented. This exercise will use the Gas Alert Micro 5, a hydrogen sulfide detector, which is used by the fire department in The Hague. Based on GPS location and a direct link with the backend dispersion model running on Prometech servers, the virtual sensor will be able to show exact concentrations and its fluctuations at the location of the trainees. This makes it possible to effectively train procedures and practices in case of a CBRN incident. Communicating readings and acting on them is of course an essential part of those procedures. Alpha, you build it over. Alpha, over. Aankom over meesbund 1.3 ppm, over. Hier uh, Alpha, uh, Roger. Uh, in the meantime, the instructor is the only person who can see the actual evolution of the plume over TNO and Reiswijk on his laptop. 
the exact location of trainees and the concentrations they are exposed to is all shown in real time on his screen. If he would so desire, he could also effectively override the scenario and make live changes by, for example, increasing the size of the leak or changing the virtual weather conditions. This allows him to react to events during the exercise, such as actions by the trainees, and to maximize the learning potential of the exercise. While the instructor knows where the plume is in detail, it is the commander's job at the headquarters to determine the approximate location. He will do this based on reports from the trainees in the field and input from the instructor. This input can be based on events defined in the scenario, such as a Mach 112 report. Alpha Roger, that gaat snel. When the leak has been closed and the plume dissipates, the incident slowly winds down. The instructor ends the exercise and trainees prepare for an evaluation session. A special tool is available for this purpose that allows the instructor and trainees to view the location of trainees during the exercise and the toxic substance concentrations they measured. The shape, size, and location of the plume are also shown to the trainees for the first time. This plume can be compared to the one drawn by the commander. During the exercise, the instructor also added notes about reported readings and events, which can now be used to evaluate the exercise and compile a list of lessons learned. And we can this now compare with what in the dispersion dispersie model, in the real simulated model, happened. I will even the forschein over here. After two minutes, there is a lack. Yeah. And there is a wind that is blowing in the TNO direction, as you have mentioned. The wind takes in fact to. Waardoor als we wat verder vooruit spoelen, kunnen zien dat het redelijk snel richting rijzak aantrekken is. Ja. De vorm komt wel ongeveer overeen zoals die ook op deze kaart weergegeven is. Dus dat lijkt mij op zich voldoende. This concludes the small scale exercise at the TNO facilities in Rijswijk. It is of course possible to repeat the exercise at any time and attempts to put lessons learned into practice. By creating a simulated threat and providing simulated sensors to detect that threat, the Prometex CBRN Response Simulator makes it possible to easily set up both small and large-scale exercises in a simple, safe, and affordable manner.